great pleasure to be here. And of course, I share all of what Fania said about having us who live in the diaspora be able to say what we might think or criticize with respect to Israel. Well, first of all, one has to understand that there's not just one diaspora. The diaspora is perhaps even more divided than Israelis themselves on Israeli questions. And there are two types of Israelis abroad nowadays. There are genuine Sabra Israelis who even served in the military who have moved or spent time abroad specifically because they're suffocating or they're feeling that many of their values are not quite incarnated as they should be inside their home and they need oxygen to breathe in wider societies where there are others out there and not just an intra-Jewish constant struggle. And then you have a much more important group of Israelis abroad. They don't carry an Israeli passport, but they're more royalist than the king in Israel if there were to be a king. And these Israelis abroad who are not Israeli are conditioning or making sure that the kind of moderate left-wing positions that most Jews across the Western world hold with respect to Israel are now considered either dangerous or somewhat frightening in terms of, because they may criticize, and the idea is that if you criticize, you are becoming part and objective ally of those who will delegitimize Israel. You're actually the entrance, you're opening the Israeli Jewish tent to bring in, if I may use the pattern, metaphor of the Trojan horse. And so we, many people who wish to criticize feel that they cannot because there are real monsters out there. And I would simply say that one can criticize because one can be with those Israelis who feel in their democratic discourse that they have much to say and to criticize about. In other words, for me, if it's in Haaretz, it's good enough as a proof that it's not anti-Semitic. I know that there are some Israelis who feel that there are self-hating Jews and Israelis here today, but I think it's too dangerous a statement. Let me just limit myself to two ethnicities I wanted to stress. I'm the only European here. Most of this debate about Israel, diaspora things, is of course devoted to America and the Israeli world. In America, everyone believes in God. It's on the dollar. <laughs> Ethnicity is a very cute, wonderful term. You know, you have ethnic food, ethnic this or that. I happen to be living in the continent that spawned the Holocaust. And post-war Europe was built on a series of never again principles in which God and ethnicity were absolute taboos because in their names were created some of humanity's most horrible crimes, if not the very most. Consequently, the term of a citizenship devoid of a religious identity or an ethnic root has been one of the founding elements of the European never again. Read my lips, it is the absolute different never again from what most Jews feel and Israel is, was built upon to make sure that the never again to the Jewish people take place. So if I live in Europe as a citizen of a pluralist democratic context, I have to conjugate on a daily basis those two never agains. Without the European never again, I can't live my full life as a Jew in Europe. But without the Israeli never again, how can I be part of the Israeli Jewish tent? We are walking on a razor's edge across Europe in ways that are much easier in America. However, this does create a situation whereby, and if I do resume what Jeremy was saying about having the iceberg ahead of us, the iceberg, even seen in European terms, is linked to issues of citizenship, belonging, mobility, and a feeling of being part of a wider national setting. And the critics here, in many cases, in the European Jewish world, is not just about what's happening on this side or that side of the Green Line, if people still believe in it. It's mainly about citizenship even inside, inside within Israel. It's about belonging to a wider state. And consequently, criticizing from that point of view takes on a different element, a different entity, a different dimension than what hears, one hears most often. So how do I, how can I be able to delegitimize without falling into the enemy camp? I use a fire metaphor. To make sure fires do not exist or take place and you've had the Fort Carmel fire, recently, of course. You have to clear the land, make sure no shrubs or dead leaves are about. You can criticize from within, and to make sure that it doesn't catch the flames on the other side, you must have an arid land. And the arid land that I will not trespass is, of course, on the issue of the boycott, 
on the, the legitimization of Israel, the raison d'etre of Israel. But if I don't criticize within the Jewish tent, I'm going to feed even more, possibly, the criticism and the hatred outside. It seems to be my right and also my duty. So I would like to end with a sort of double metaphor here. Are we on thin ice? No. Is there an iceberg? Absolutely. How can I criticize by standing on rock-solid granite? And that is my position.